All right, how's everybody doing out there in calculus land? This is Mr. Muscarella coming at you, and today we're going to take a look at the Intermediate Value Theorem, otherwise known as the IVT. Now, the Intermediate Value Theorem states, if f is continuous on the closed interval a, b, and k is any number between f of a and f of b, then there's at least one number c in this closed interval a, b, such that f of c equals k. So we're going to go ahead and dissect this and kind of break it down into two things that you're going to have to be able to find. Sometimes you'll be asked to just show that there's a C value in the interval. And the C value is just the X coordinate that gives you some Y coordinate, K, that's within the interval that you're given. The other thing that you might actually be asked to do is find what that X value is. Find the value of C that gives you that certain Y value. Now to make this a little bit more practical, we'll go ahead and take a look at this example. I was 5'2 on my 10th birthday and 5'6 on my 13th birthday. What do we know about my height at any one point during that time from when I was 10 to 13? Well, as my age increased between 10 and 13, my height was also increasing. So somewhere along the way, I had to be 5'3", 5'4", 5'5", and eventually I, I topped out at 5'6". But every height in between 5'2 and 5'6", I was that height at some point in time. We just don't always know when. So now we're going to actually take a look at a calculus example, and we'll go ahead and dissect this. For this problem, we've got to do, verify that the intermediate value theorem applies to the indicated interval and find the value of C guaranteed by the theorem. So we're going to break this up into two pieces. We've got our function f of x equals x cubed minus x squared plus x minus 2 in the interval 0 to 3. And the y value that we're trying to find is 4. So we want to know what value of c, what value, what x value, gives us a y value of 4. So first, we're going to show that the IVT applies. This is where most people will make the common mistake. They will forget to state that the function, in this case f of x, is continuous on 0, 3 because polynomials are everywhere continuous. So you need to make sure that you write that step to show that the function is continuous within the interval that you're given. A lot of people drop that. The second step is to evaluate the function at the endpoints. In this case, we have the two, point, the two x values, 0 and 3. So what we do is we plug 0 into f of x, and we come up with a value of negative 2, and we plug in 3 to f of x, and when we do that, we get a value of 19. And those two endpoints tell us that this y value of 4 has to be between negative 2 and 19. And that's just kind of common sense. Our left endpoint's less than our right endpoint. And our y value that we're trying to find, this f of c, well, yeah, that's stuck in between negative 2 and 19. Now, you don't have to write step 3, but some textbooks and some teachers might show that or might require that. I know that I don't, but you definitely have to state it this way f of 0 is less than 4 is less than f of 3. Now once you've got all that sorted out, our last step is to write our big closer. And this is what will get you another point on here. You'll state by the intermediate value theorem there exists a c in 0, 3 such that f of c equals 4. So that was the very first part. We verified that the IVT applies. Now the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to actually find that x value that gives us an answer of 4 when we plug it into our function. So to do that, what we're going to do is, first thing we're going to do is we're going to take our function, f of x, we're going to set that thing equal to 4, because that's the y value that we want. The next thing that we're going to do is we're going to move the 4 over. So of course, when you subtract 4 on both sides, you'll get x cubed minus x squared plus x minus 6, and we set that equal to 0. Now, in order to solve this, because there's a lot of different techniques you can use, but we're going to use synthetic division, because that's going to get us to our answer the most quickly. Now, if you remember the rational zero theorem, where you had p over q, and you would try all the different fa possible factors or possible zeros for it, we're going to go ahead and try two. Now, I'm going to pluck the coefficients, 1, negative 1, 1, and negative 6, from my polynomial, and we're going to go ahead and evaluate that when x is 2. When I do that, I'll go ahead and end up with a 0 at the very end. And that's what I want, because I want my function f of x, I want that 
to be 0 after I set it equal to 4 and then move the 4 over. So x cubed minus x squared plus x minus 6 equals 0 when x is 2. Now what this tells us kind of two things. First, this gives us the two factors of my polynomial x cubed minus x squared plus x minus 6. The two factors are x minus 2 and x squared plus x plus 3 and I know that that equals 0 when x equals 2. The other thing that this tells us, and this is the part you have to state also, is that f of 2 is 4, or my c value is 2. So that's how you show that the value of c that you're trying to find. That's how you go ahead and write that down to prove what the value of c is or find the value of c. So hopefully by now you not only know how to verify the IVT, but you can also find the value of C that's guaranteed by the theorem. Thanks for watching, and you guys have a great day. Peace out.